Okay, perfect. Okay, hi everyone. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's open evening. Tonight we will focus on our BA Honours in English and History and our BA Honours in Media, English and Culture. My name is Denise, I'm a Student Recruitment Coordinator and we're delighted to have you here tonight. So, firstly, I'm just going to give a little bit of introduction about Carlo and the college itself. Then we'll move on to a presentation about our BA Honours in Media, um, or sorry, in English and History, which will be done by Dr. Simon Workman. Then I'll put some questions to some of our current students um, who are currently studying on the English and History programme. So I will encourage you, if you do have any questions throughout the session, to pop them in the Q&A box and I'll put them to our panellists at the end. We'll then move on to uh, our BA Honours in Media, English and Culture with Dr. Owen Smith. And then at the end of the session, I'll leave a few minutes then to put some more questions to our students. And also, if you have any questions for any of our academic staff, I'd encourage you to put, put them in as well. So just a little bit about ourselves then. So um, we're a small college located in the heart of Carlow Town. We're really close to the bus and train stations. Um, so it's really easy to commute to if that's um, your way to get to college. Um, we're close to shops, restaurants, pubs, so there's always something happening. Between ourselves and the IT, there's about eight to 9,000 students in Carlo, so it's a really student-friendly town, loads of opportunities to meet people your own age, from different backgrounds, studying different disciplines. As a campus, we're rich in culture, so we do have the Visual Centre for Contemporary Art and the George Bernard Shaw Theatre on our campus. So if you're somebody who's interested in arts and culture, uh, this is a great way to attend events or get involved in some way. On some of our courses as well, we do collaborate with the visual, so that's a great opportunity as well. Then, of course, you do have the Arts Festival in Carlow, and then you're close to Kilkenny as well, which is known for its vibrant arts culture. We are Ireland's second oldest third level institute, and we offer courses at level seven, level eight, and level nine. So um, just a couple of facts then to start us off, we have a one to 17 lecture to student ratio. So what this means is our class sizes are smaller than a lot of the larger universities. This gives you an opportunity to get to know your lecturers um, on a one-to-one -one basis. They know you um, by first name, and you just really get that personal time with them that you might not get otherwise. 75% of our academic staff are PhD qualified, making them experts in their fields. So you're getting a really high quality of education from them throughout your degree. If you're somebody who wants to move out of home um, in Carlo, um, or sorry, in college, um, rent in Carlo is 37 to, percent cheaper than the national average okay so what this does is it takes away that financial worry and stress that you might have in some um, other cities such as Cork or Dublin okay so it gives you the time to focus on your studies and nurture those relationships with your peers and with your lecturers. 91% of our graduates are in employment or further study within one year of graduating and this is largely due to the placements and internships we offer um, on most of our undergraduate degrees because it gives you that hands-on experience to um, figure out what you're interested in. You get to explore some career opportunities um, through that um, so you're ready to go out into the working world. And 95% of our overall graduates would recommend Carlo College as a positive place to study. So I am going to hand you over now to Dr. Simon Workman, who will take you through our English and history degree. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy and don't forget to post any questions you might have in the Q&A box. Um, OK, Simon, I'm just going to hand you some control access so you should be able to control it now. That's great. Thanks very much, Denise. And good evening, everyone. Um, as Denise has mentioned, uh, my name is Simon Workman. I'm the Programme Director of the English and History Programme here at Carlow. And I'm also a lecturer, an English lecturer on the course. Um, Denise, you might just uh, do the slides. They don't appear to be working from my end. So if I just could instruct you to, to, to forward, that'd be great. So if we just move to the first slide then, that's great. So the first guys want to talk to you about what's involved in the English and History degree. So at a basic level, it's a four year level eight degree. Obviously, you specialize in English and history. And in a general sense, what we want for our students is for them to develop or deepen further their knowledge of literature and English 
and to develop or deepen further their um, knowledge of history. And as part of that, we place a focus on both local history and, and global history and how those two types of histories intersect. And we seek for our students in terms of history uh, to develop a, a deep understanding of human society and culture um, uh, in the last millennium. Uh, so slide there, uh, Denise, thanks. That's great. More specifically then, what literature will you study as part of this degree? Our degree is, is structured so that you will focus on Irish, British and American literature, not exclusively, but that is the main focus. And chronologically speaking, from roughly the 18th century to the present day, although we do do Shakespeare, for example, and we go back further, but that tends to be where we focus uh, the majority of our, of our um, teaching. Um, and when we say to the present day, that, that means right up to the present. So you might find yourself studying something like The Wolf of Wall Street or indeed um, Normal People um, by Sally Rooney. Um, and we have a, a bit of a research specialty in, in contemporary literature, Irish contemporary literature in particular. So we, we do like students to think about how literature reflects their contemporary experience. Um, so that might be a feature that, that is attractive to students. But we also, of course, look at the canonical literary texts um, that some of you will be familiar with. Um, as I say, beginning really with the 18th century and moving right up to the present. Um, slide, Denise. Then in terms of history more specifically, again, our focus tends to be on Irish, European and American history and, and transatlantic history um, from roughly the medieval period to the present. Um, although again, we, it's not exclusively on those, in those areas, but that tends to be the dominant focus. And our history degree is, is structured in a way that you, uh, move through these different historical um, interests in, in a roughly chronological manner. And that tends to suit students. Students like that, that they kind of begin in the medieval period and they move again right up to the present day. And where possible, and it is possible in lots of places, we've designed the, the degrees so that when you're studying the literature from a particular period, you're also studying the history for that period. And that allows for some really interesting parallels and cross fertilizations of ideas to happen because when you're studying maybe the literature of the 18th century you might also be studying the history of that period or if you're studying contemporary Irish history you might also be looking at contemporary Irish literature uh, and students tend to like that because they can see how those two disciplines complement each other and that's something that we really focus on in this degree and we've structured it so that it works in that way so that the two subjects aren't operating in a vacuum. Uh, slide Denise. So in a basic way, how does this degree work, okay? Um, one of the things that we're really focused on on the degree is helping making the transition from kind of school, or maybe if you've been out of, of, of school or college for if you're a mature student, transitioning back into third level. So in the first year of the degree, we really put a lot of focus on the basics of studying English and history. So there's, there's courses that really help you begin to develop your skill as a critic and an historian, and also your skill as a writer writing for third level, okay? And so if you're frightened about that, or if you're nervous about that, don't be, because we put in loads of supports there to help you transition, to make that transition up into third level. And you'll be given really clear foundations in the two subjects uh, that you'll, that you'll um, be taking English and history. And that will help you embark on your own journey and develop your own interests. It will give you a really good grounding in these two subjects. Uh, slide, Denise. More specifically, how does it work on a year-to-year -year basis? So in the first years, the first two years of the degree, you'll be doing mandatory modules. And there, the reason for that is, is again, this notion of foundational knowledge. We want you to develop a really strong foundational knowledge of English and history. But once you've developed that in years three and four, you get a lot more uh, variety in terms of the modules you can choose from. And you can develop your own interests in English or history. And by the final year, all your modules bar the dis dissertation module are elective. So you can become sort of, you can do, if you're more interested in English, there's a route through the degree that allows you to develop that interest in really deep ways. If you're more inter interested in history, you can do that as well. Or if you want to keep a balance of both, that's also possible. But what we really want for our students is that they sort of begin their degree studying history and English but they end their degree by becoming historians, critics, and writers, and doing these subjects, doing history and doing English. That's what we want. Um, 
and that's sort of a that's the intellectual development that we're looking for and that's why the degree is structured as it is we want you to become an expert or develop expertise in these subjects um slide uh, denise so this is a question uh, students often ask me who, who will be teaching with me teaching me on the program all of the lecturers on the English history program are phd qualified every single one but perhaps as important is the fact that they're also research active, okay? And I've just put up a sample of some of the recent publications that we've had from the English and History program in recent years, um, award-winning books um, and really uh, sort of relevant uh, uh, books as well. If you see there, uh, Ida Milne's book on influenza and pandemics, which obviously we probably are feeling at the moment. Um, why is that important? Well, it signifies the level of interest and dedication that your lecturers have for their subject material. And that, to me, as a prospective student, would be important because it tells me that these people love their subject, that, they, that they're prepared to sort of go above and beyond in terms of the teaching of the subject, and hopefully that they'll bring that enthusiasm to you as a student. So if you're enthused about these subjects, you will meet a similar level of enthusiasm as well and expertise, which is exciting because yeah. some of the courses you'll be taking, you'll be taught by people who are at the very edge of knowledge, um, you know, really innovative lecturers um, who are doing kind of world-class research. And that's a really exciting thing to be part of, I think. Okay, um, slide, Denise. This is a question that we get commonly asked is, is does this degree allow me to do teaching? Once you complete a teaching master's after the degree, you can do primary or secondary school teaching. And um, so obviously you have to go on and do that master's to do it. Uh, but this degree is the degree that you need to do before that. And um, what subjects will enable me to teach after I have completed the master's? No matter what choices you make in the degree in terms of electives, you will be qualified to teach English and history. The, the Teaching Council of Ireland have certain requirements in terms of what types of history and English you need to teach. Um, and how many modules you need to do, no matter what choices you make in the degree. And uh, once you've got your master's in education, you'll be able to teach English and history at secondary school, or indeed the degree does set you up to go on to do uh, primary uh, uh, education masters as well. So uh, you, you can, once you do the masters is the answer to that question. Um, slide, Denise. So what do our graduates do? Because sometimes I think people sometimes look at English history and think it's a teaching degree. It's absolutely not. Teaching is just one of many uh, careers that we know our graduates have, have gone into. So these are the list before you there are uh, sectors that we know graduates have gone into afterwards. So marketing, public relations, media and journalism, the civil service, publishing, administration, libraries and archives, travel and journalism, management, IT, banking, creative mm -hmm. arts, uh, and postgraduate study. And just, just on the postgraduate study, so that means masters or PhDs, um, what we find is that the dissertation module, which is the kind of capstone module at the end of the degree, we give you a large piece of research. Uh, evidence suggests that that sets up our students really well for postgraduate study. And we've heard from directors of other master's programs that our students do really well in these programs. And part of the reason for that is that they've taken this large piece of research at the end of the degree, uh, and they've already kind of started to transition to master's level um, research and analysis. Um, but the general point guys is that there is a multitude of things you can do with this degree okay it's not limiting really if you look at the different sectors that are there and it's a really good basis for those for those different um types of jobs okay uh, uh slide uh, denise and what about that career after college one of the things that we've built into the degree is is, is called an employability strand and what that means is that you will take two modules um one is mandatory, the other is option, optional. So career skills is, is mandatory and career practice is optional. Um, but the career skills module, what it's designed to do is set you up for life after your degree. Um, what research tells us is that students who don't do these types of modules uh, before they exit a degree, they tend to be less satisfied with their career after it. So that's why we sort of included this employability strand. It allows you to think about what you're gonna do about after college, way ahead of when you graduate and you'll get access to kind of experts in different fields and get to meet them and interview them and ask them questions um, and think about how you market yourself uh, in the career workspace after the degree. Okay, so it really sets up for that. And then you have the option of doing a, a placement as well in a sector that's relevant uh, for um, English and history graduates. And again, that's something that will add to your CV once you exit 
um, the degree. And we think that it sets up students really well for life after college because we're concerned about that as well. We're not just concerned about when you're here, we're concerned about when you leave here and how you get on. Okay, um, slide Denise. This is what one of our graduates, and I could replicate this a hundred times, say about our college community, and I think it expresses it quite well. It's not just that, you know, you'll have a very well worked out degree and really, you know, impressive staff working for you. There's also a very strong sense of community in Cardo College and, you know, on our degree. So what one you one of our former students says about this is at Cardo College, you very much feel like you're part of something, part of a community. You get to know people on a more personal, meaningful level. You feel like the lecturers take a personal interest in each student. I never felt like I was just another number that came through the college. And I suppose to sort of evidence that by the end of your degree, most lecturers will know the names of every person in their class, okay? Um, and that speaks to the sort of knowledge that we have of our students. And that definitely enhances teaching, that knowledge that we get of students. Um, and it confirms, I think, what Anya's talking about there. Uh, slide, Denise. This is a sort of a, a, a concluding, we're moving to our conclusion, a, a concluding reason as, as to why you might take up English and history degree. And it's a sort of snapshot, I suppose, of what we feel are some of the strongest features of the degree. So there is this strong emphasis that I spoke about earlier about how English and history can be uh, uh, interdisciplinary. And in other words, how they can work together, how English can complement history and how can history can complement English. Um, there's also the employability strand, which we feel is very useful. Something we haven't mentioned yet, but I think is important is that our retention rates, in other words, once you start the degree, whether you finish it, are extremely high, particularly on this degree. Um, and that speaks to the fact that students like the degree, they want to stay on the degree and they want to finish the degree, and also that we support them in doing that. So I, I don't think that should be underestimated. And finally, another thing we haven't mentioned is that you do have an opportunity to study abroad for a term. And that's a wonderful experience. And every student that's done it so far has really enjoyed it. Um, so we have relationships with colleges and universities in America where you can sort of take part of your degree that maps across to their degree in America and get a, a really wonderful experience of studying in another country. Uh, and finally then, um, Denise, the fifth reason I think is more intangible than these external factors. A degree in English and history, I think at its best can also be uh, a journey, a journey of your imagination. And uh, Slides, uh, Denise. And what's that journey involve? Well, in one way, it's a journey backwards where you immerse yourself in some of the most consequential and dramatic moments in history um, with experts who know intimate details about those moments and can tell you some fascinating things about it. But it's also, in terms of literature, it's also a chance to sort of voyage into some of the most strange, wonderful, magnificent worlds created by some of the greatest writers that have ever lived. So that more, uh, I suppose, um, internal journey that you go on. For some students, that's the best part of the degree. And as I say, the enthusiasm that you'll bring to that will be met by the staff on the program on taking you on that journey. So that's why we feel that, that this degree it might be something for you, all of those reasons combined. Thanks very much, uh, Denise, that's me. That's great, thanks Simon. Loads of information there for anybody who is interested in studying English and history. I will just mention there as well, just in terms of the teaching, if um, you decide to go into primary teaching, it's just something I reiterate in my presentations all the time, you do still need your H4 in Irish in your Leaving Cert. I just want to make that clear so there's no uh, misconceptions about that. Um, but that was great, loads of information. And um, so I'm going to move on to talking to two of our students now. We'll, we'll hear from Lorda Delaney, who is in her fourth year, her final year, and Mark Mahoney, who is in second year on the English and History programme. So if both of you guys would like to unmute and turn on your cameras, if you can, that would be great. Um, and I just have a few questions. Hi, guys. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. Um, yeah, so I suppose I'll start off with asking, why did you study, choose to study English and history? Mark, I'll start with you. I chose to study English and history because throughout my life, I've always had an interest with history mainly. My granddad put me on his lap and reading to me history books like from World War II, showing me uh, photographs of World War II. And then through, it wasn't until this course actually that I really discovered that my love for English 
mainly because my secondary school teachers, I didn't get along with, with as English teachers, but then with the lectures in the college, I loved English. That's that, great. That's, yeah. 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 Thanks, Meg. And you, Lorda, what did you, why did you choose to study English and history? Um, I chose to stu study English and history because I've always had an interest in both. They were my favourite subjects in primary school and secondary school. Because when you study literature and English and history, you're developing your knowledge on both subjects, while also gaining a better understanding of ourselves as humans, a better understanding of society and of culture on a local, national and international level. And I think the two disciplines really go hand in hand together. Yeah, that's great. That's something that I, I say to the, the students when I'm out in schools. It's when you're studying one thing in English, you'll come across the, the same period in, in history. So you can kind of see the connections of what was happening in the world and what was happening. And then people writing about those events as well, which is really interesting, I find. Uh, so, Lorda, I suppose following on to that, what is your uh, favourite module <laughs> to date? Seeing as you're in your final year, what was your most favourite <laughs> to do? Yeah, that's a really difficult question to yeah. answer. It's like, ask me to pick a favourite child. I know, yeah. <laughs> um, but if I had to choose one, it would be creative writing in poetry and in fiction so I suppose that's two really um you have the opportunity to let your imagination run free with creative writing uh, without having to stress about footnotes and referencing and bi bibliography which would normally go into a an essay assignment um having said that though you do have to include literary devices that you learn on the course or on yeah on the modules um, into your creative writing and I also like to include historical facts and figures and places or events so the ancient history combines in that way too. Mm. Yeah that's great thanks Lorda and uh, Mark so I suppose kind of a similar question what do you like about your course is there any aspect um, that stands out to you the most um, like that in a specific module or just from the lectures that kind of thing? The thing that stands out to me the most is the relationship from student to lecturer is that when I enter a class it feels like more of a conversation than an actual lecture it never feels like I'm just a student it makes me feel like um there is something there that is uh symbiotic between the two yeah. that they're we're learning from each other at times Great, thanks. And uh, Lorda then, um, how have you enjoyed your study experience at Carlo College? Has it been positive? Have you um, learned something about yourself? Or <laughs> um, It's been a very positive experience. I've loved every bit of it. Um, the college is really friendly. Staff are really supportive. And as a student, you're being taught by highly qualified, passionate and enthusiastic lecturers who make learning a pleasure. Um, I'd highly recommend English and history to anyone who has an interest in studying in Carlow College. And I've learned that you have to question everything. Um, you're taught how to think for yourself and question what you think you know. So, yeah. Great, thanks, Florida. And Mark, um, seeing as you're only in year two, and um, I suppose with the pandemic, it's kind of been probably a little bit different for you. How have you found the experience studying, kind of hybrid studying? Um, how have you found that? In the first year was, um, how, how can I, it was recognizable because in secondary school, I had done online learning. Okay. And in college, it was just a seamless transition. But then when I went into the college, it was difficult to learn my roots around the college. And it was awkward at first, but then as time went on, it became natural. Mm. And have you found that there, there, there's good support in the college if you need anything on this course specifically? Um... Yes, I suffer with dyslexia, severe dyslexia. So the college has given me uh, tutors that can help me read over my work. They've given me exemptions in spelling for exams, extra time for exams as well, which always releases my anxiety that I have with assignments. It's like, okay, I can relax and really focus on essays or anything that they give me. That's great. That's actually really useful because that's um, a question I get sometimes in schools. So that's good for, for students, prospective students to know as well. 
And then I suppose, Lorda, because you're in your final year, I will ask Mark this question as well, but Lorda, seeing as you're in your final year, what are you hoping to do after you graduate? <laughs> Um, I'm hoping to go on and do further study, uh, hopefully a master's in creative writing and hopefully continue writing poetry and prose in the hope of getting, getting it published, <laughs> who knows. Um, I'd also like to come back to Carlow College at some point in the future to study a few of the modules that I didn't get around to this time. So, yeah. Well, that's great and we'll look forward to seeing you on the bookshelves. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll see. Mark, can you... <laughs> I know, let's be positive. <laughs> uh, Mark, how about you? What, what do you hope to do? Similar to Lord, I want to do further study and get my master's and teach for a few years as well, and then eventually work to a PhD and hopefully come back to either Carroll College or another university as a lecturer. Great, all great aspirations. And I'm sure it speaks volumes of, of the course as well. Thanks guys uh, for joining us. If you want to hang on and if anyone who's watching this evening has any questions for Lorda or Mark or, or Simon or, or um, any of our lecturers or our panelists today, um, just pop them in the Q&A box and I'll put them to them at the end. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. Oh, no worries. Okay, so we're going to move on now to hear from Dr. Owen Smith, who is a lecturer in English here at Carlow College, and he's going to speak about our brand new course for 2022 in Media, English and Culture. Okay, Owen, so I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Denise. I think you're, are you, am I on the screen or are you on the screen at this point? Um, I'll do the screen, yeah, just <laughs> if that's okay, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this Media, English and Culture is a, is a, as you said, Denise, it's a new exciting course that we're launching in September 2022. Um, it's for people who want to learn about media and cultural forms, production, practices and industries across a range of subject areas. So the course includes film, television, documentary, literature in English, music uh, and creative arts. Within the creative arts, we have modules in community arts, creative writing and drama and other modules in social media and creativity, which I'll talk about a bit later. Um, and ultimately, what people will gain out of this course is the opportunity to build a career in fields such as media, arts, arts administration, or education sectors, um, other such uh, um, type of uh, industries, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. So um, what is media, English and culture all about? Well, there's four strands to the program um, and you can chart your own path through it. So um, those four strands are media, English, popular culture and creative arts. Um, and you can choose which one of these strands you want to put your emphasis on. Some people will like to choose English and media, for, for, for example. Others may prefer to take a more creative path through the program, choosing creative arts modules with English or with media or with popular culture modules. Or some might like to choose from a wide variety of different options, combining modules from all four different streams. So the choice is yours. Um, it's it, a bit like the English and History degree. Um, there's a lot of flexibility within the program once you get past uh, the foundational year of stage one. Um, so how is the degree structured? So as you go through the degree, um, you get more and more options as the program opens up. In year one, you take foundation modules in, uh, in cinema, in literature, cultural studies and music. In year two, you'll take modules um, such as contemporary Irish writing, television and community arts. And in second year, there are also options for you to take modules in English literature, in creative writing, poetry uh, and drama. In third year, we have really exciting new modules that explore contemporary forms of culture such as social media and media arts and there are even more choices for you uh, in English literature. Uh, there are modules in popular music, cinema uh, and in other media modules and in the fourth year everything is open to choice so what you do in stage four is really up to you. 
and you can concentrate your studies in media, in literature, creative arts, or other cultural studies, including social media modules. So just to give you a flavor of some of the sample modules that we have on the program, you can see there that, for instance, we have modules in media and society, contemporary Irish writing, music and visual cultures, drama and performance, uh, curating creative arts, and so on. There's a kind of a very broad variety of uh, modules, all of which are speaking to that core title of uh, media, English uh, and um, uh, culture. Um, new modules which are introducing into um, the, uh, sorry, if you just flick back there for a second, into the college um, are things like digital storytelling, in which you'd be able to kind of creatively write using new media platforms, uh, such as Facebook, TikTok, uh, Twitter, um, you know, and so on. Um, also the chance to study, uh, you know, things such as popular music, for instance, so you'd be studying pop music, what's in the charts. Um, we also wrapped this very, very uh, large module called Community Arts, which is a 15 credit module in stage two, which is a really interesting uh, module, which helps you to develop expertise in developing uh, arts events uh, in developing creative projects and it really lays the foundation for all of the arts, creative arts uh, modules on the program. So just to talk a little bit about the specialism in creative arts, one of the unique features about this program is the opportunity to specialize in creative arts. So you can choose to do modules in creative writing, where you learn from published authors uh, in the fields of poetry uh, and fiction, uh, or you can take modules in drama, and those modules in drama will be held in visual, which is, as Denise says, is the world-class theatre, which is located on the Carlow College campus. You'll also take the module called Community Arts, which I mentioned to you briefly there, which gives you really practical experiences of how to develop uh, arts events and creative projects. And in that module, which is taught also in visual, you'll work with um, uh, arts practitioners in the development of those art, arts projects. There's also really exciting opportunities to study modules in media and creative arts using social media platforms to create content as well as a really interesting module called curating creative arts and that module is for people who think that they may want a career in the creative arts or in events management or in arts curation. Now just to say a little bit about the creative arts stream just to reassure people that it's absolutely optional, of course, you don't have to take these modules in creative arts, but they are on the module for, or on the program for people who are interested in them. But if you wanted to simply study media studies and English, that's also a possibility for you on this program. So the program is very, very flexible in that regard. It gives you lots of different opportunities to tailor the degree to what it is that you're interested in. Um, there are practical experiences too in the program. Um, these are really exciting opportunities to get hands-on experiences. For instance, the community arts module places all the learners in the professional space of the Visual Center for Contemporary Arts. The program also provides you with choices to take modules such as drama and performance housed in visual, taught by visual staff, and the introduction to cur curating creative events module, which is collaboratively delivered with visual. You're exposed to the professional expertise of creative practitioners uh, on the teaching team in the fields of media, English and culture, specifically in fiction and poetry writing. And um, as you'll have heard from uh, Lorda uh, and you've seen with the English and History program, the college is particularly strong in creative writing. Um, but there's also creative practitioners in media, film, digital storytelling, uh, and musical performance. So this is a really rich learning environment um, that can sow the seeds of a professional network uh, for graduates of this program. What kind of skills will you learn in the program? One of the great things about this course is the range of skills that you learn and can apply, apply to different fields of employment afterwards. So you'll learn crucial skills such as critical thinking and the ability to understand and interpret contemporary culture that we live in and which shapes us in fundamental ways, how to understand social media, for instance, or how to interpret media and cultural forms such as cinema, literature, and music, all of the things which we fill our lives up with. 
You'll also get a really strong foundation in understanding popular culture and how to write. You may even, if you choose to take uh, the creative modules, how to write, learn how to write creatively or write for social media platforms through a module such as digital storytelling. So these are all skills that we know employers are hungry for, creative and critical graduates uh, with flexible and adaptive skills. So what kind of things could you do on graduation? There are loads of opportunities for students of this program to go into very uh, diverse range of employment fields. For instance, journalism or professional writing, public relations, advertising and marketing. You could go into the community arts sector or arts management. You could become a creative practitioner, a creative writing or uh, work in theater or even in creative digital media. Publishing uh, is also a route for graduates of this program as is events management and the culture, the wider culture sector, sector for instance, TV uh, and film. Or like a lot of our graduates from many of our programs um, in Carlow College, working in the public service is also an opportunity, as is teaching. This program will qualify you for um, teaching English at second level. You'd have to combine it with a second subject, or you could go into primary school teaching as well. So that's it, Denise, that's, um, that's the program in a snapshot. I'll hand back to you now. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Owen. Uh, loads of information there about the, the new degree. Um, so if you have any questions, um, I'll pop them in the Q&A box there, anybody watching, and I'll put them to our panelists now. Um, and you can see there Simon and Owen's email address if you have any specific questions that they might be able to answer at a later date. Or you can contact ourselves, student recruitment at slo at carlocollege.ie otherwise. So I suppose I'll just ask, um, and we have uh, Dr. Derek Coyle joining us as well, uh, who is also one of our lecturers in English. So. Um, I suppose just to kind of kick the question and answer session off, I'll ask Derek, on the English and history degree in particular, what kind of creative writing projects can students um, expect to, to be involved in? Or what, what do, do you mean by creative writing? Yeah, well, creative writing, I suppose, means that uh, students will express themselves and, and they'll write original work of their own. Uh, again, as uh, Owen has pointed out, this is a strong strand in our program. So uh, students need panic. I, I work with people who are starting to explore this for the first time ever in their lives, if you like. Uh, I teach uh, advanced poetry to um, the English and history students in third year. And they will build up a portfolio in the course of the module and they'll write 10 original poems of their own uh, for that portfolio. And we'll work week by week. They'll write a poem and then they'll hand it up to me and I'll critique it, meaning I'll make suggestions, uh, ideas that they can work on to develop the poem further. And they'll submit um, an advanced version of it, if you like, in their portfolio at the end. So, um we explore lots of contemporary poetry uh, uh, in that module. So poems written in the last 10, 15 years uh, responding to contemporary issues. And we'll look at a poem generally very carefully in each class. And then I give um, participants and students uh, um, a prompt based around some of that material to, you know, provoke their own memories, their own thought uh, around the topic. And I'll give them time to write then. And then we spend other uh, uh, moments in the class. We look at just various techniques you can do to sharpen up uh, your poetry writing. So things like line breaks, developing images or metaphors, that sort of thing. So I hope that answers your question anyway, Denise. Uh, they're always fun and uh, very active. And uh, it's they're very popular modules. Uh, with the uh, students in the college. And I'm also like when graduates like uh, Lourdes are planning to take up a postgraduate degree in creative writing, which many have done over the years. And Lourdes is too modest to mention it, but she's already had a couple of poems published uh, in journals uh, already. And that always excites me to see our students publish their own original creative work uh, uh, growing out of their undergraduate experience in the college. So that's really fantastic. Yeah, it's great to see that. And it really does speak, um, as I said before, volumes about the course um, when you see students um, getting their work published um, that they've worked on. Um, 
I just have, sorry, I'm just going to go on a tangent. I have a question that's just popped in the box here. Um, I suppose for Owen, um, is there an easing in period before subject choices are made in first year of media, English and culture? Um, well, first year is the easing in period, if I can put it that way. Um, so what you get in first year are foundational modules in media. Uh, so I think that, you know, one of the, uh, the first modules that you take is, is just a basic introduction to media studies module. There's also an introduction to literature module. Uh, there's also a very kind of foundational uh, music module. Um, so the first year really uh, builds the platform for um, the choices that you will begin to make then in second, third and fourth year. Like all our programs at Carlow College, we also have uh, a module called Academic and Digital Skills. All first year students take this module and, and as Simon has indicated in a different context, um, we place particular emphasis on transitioning students from secondary school into third level. And a module like that gives you the basic skills to basically deal with um, what's expected at you at third level. So the easing in period, if you like, is what we actually provide in first year. Now, when you get into second, third and fourth year, you can begin to really um, uh, narrow down your, your choices in terms of, you know, what kind of areas of study in the program that you really want to concentrate on. So um, in a way, the more options you get as the program develops, the narrower your focus can become. So the, 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 the program is designed with this particular question in mind, Janice, I would say that it is designed to ease you in in first year and then to give you all the tools you need to really explore those things that you want to look at in second, third and fourth year. I hope that answers your question. Thanks. If it doesn't and come I back to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I suppose um, a question I get lot, uh, asked a lot, on, and it's not just on the new programmes, it's on all the programmes, is what is the timetable like? And I know you don't know the timetable at this stage, but I suppose in terms of contact hours in general, uh, what, what kind of contact hours would students be looking at? So, they, so you'll take six modules um, in each semester and those modules will be two hours long. So you'll have 12 hours of lectures per week and you will also have three hours of tutorials um, every week for about, uh, I think, eight weeks or 10 weeks. So you can expect to have 15 hours a week of class time in year one and two, and then that will drop um, in year three and four when we don't uh, run tutorials and those 15 hours will be spread out over four or five days we imagine it's normally five but sometimes it can be four but I would say five is probably standard for most students perfect thanks Owen. and on the English and history degree is it the same uh... yes it would be the same um, just I suppose as you've mentioned it's we can't guarantee, you know, it'll only be a certain number of days. It tends to be on English history degree three or four days that uh, students are in. Often they'll have, there'll be a day where they're not in. Um, and we do try where possible to to, um, to not drag students in for one, one hour lesson or something. So we do try to accommodate students in that sense, but it is a full-time degree. You know, it's not a degree that you can take part-time, but um, having said that, we do have students who do work part time at weekends or in evenings and they can do it. Um, so, uh, yeah, about 15 hours a week of contact. Um, uh, and as Owen mentions, that will go down as you go through the degree um, because um, of the reduced reduce number of tutorials in third and fourth year. Perfect. Um, and Owen, I suppose I asked Derek about the creative writing aspect to the English and history degree. For students who are more interested in the creative side of the media, English and culture uh, degree, what kind of projects or modules um, will they be taking or can they take? Yeah, so there's actually quite a lot um, of what we call creative arts on the programme. Um, so there are, there are two uh, creative writing poetry modules, which Derek teaches. There's also a creative writing module in fiction, um, 
which I have been teaching, but I didn't teach this year. Um, but there's also modules in um, drama and performance. So there's two modules in, if you like, theatre practice. Now, they are optional modules that students can take if they're interested in drama. They can take those modules, very popular modules on other programmes that we have. Um, we have uh, then uh, a module called Creativity and Social Media, which is basically using social media platforms for creative projects, which is really interesting. It's like, you know, how, how do you use something like TikTok creatively, for instance? So in those modules, you're actually learning how to create digital content. And we do think some of our graduates will go on to, to be content creators um, and perhaps even um, develop their own businesses uh, out of uh, content creation uh, on social media platforms. Um, there's also the digital storytelling um, module, which ties in really with the creativity and social media module. It's about using digital platforms for writing. Um, uh, then there is the community arts module, which is a second year module, which is, which is taught jointly with visual. Um, and it, a lot of the classes will be in visual. It's a year long module in which you get to develop arts projects across a range of different um, uh, genres. So there's like a literature arts project, there's a drama project, there's a music project and so on. And finally in fourth year, there's a um, what we call um, a, a, a large in student project. So sometimes students like to do a kind of a liter literature dissertation, which is worth 15 credits, which is about a quarter of the credits for fourth year. But we're, in this program, we're allowing students to do a creative project for, for their final year large project. And that could be a, a creative writing portfolio, for instance, it could be a poetry portfolio, it could be a fiction portfolio, or it could be even a piece of performance art done through um, the drama module. So there are lots of opportunities, not just to do, not just to do creative arts within modules that are set for you by the lecturer, but also to develop your own creative arts projects. Great, that sounds very interesting. <laughs> um, I'm really contemporary yes, it's as well. Great. It's really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is because uh, I don't think there is much like it in uh, in like in this area, I suppose, um, in the southeast. I mean, <laughs> um, which is good. Um, Derek, I suppose, can you speak a little bit about the student um, literary awards that happen? Uh, uh, to present the awards in our neighbour's very fine establishment that's visual right beside us. And uh, over the last number of years, we've had very uh, prestigious writers actually present the awards for us. Uh, unfortunately, last year, our event had to happen online, but that meant that the great Irish poet, uh, Michael Longley, up there in Belfast, was actually able to present our awards for us. So that was very exciting because we actually studied uh, some of his uh, poetry. So it was actually great then that he presented the awards to students and got to hear them read uh, their own work. Uh, students may be familiar from the Leaving Cert with Paul Meehan and Elaine Aquilanon, uh, both of whom are very fine contemporary uh, leading Irish poets and indeed international poets. And they've presented awards to our students in the last uh, number of years. So that's to help cultivate a culture of creativity uh, where our students aren't afraid to uh, find their voices and express themselves in one of the world's oldest art forms that is uh, mm -hmm. poetry and uh, prose actually uh, quite a modern uh, art form as my colleagues would point out uh, uh, relatively speaking be about just three centuries uh, old uh, uh, or thereabouts so anyway very exciting <laughs> great opportunity for students um to get involved with that um yeah, and I think um, probably just one or two final questions then, because we're nearing up to seven o'clock. Just in terms of assessment, I know this is something that came up in Tuesday night session as well. 
what are the assessments like? <laughs> the million dollar question, I suppose, for students coming from second level, I suppose sometimes it can be um, quite overwhelming to, to then go into having so many <laughs> assignments um, or larger pieces of work. So if you just, are they a continuous assessment? Are they essays? Uh, how are they structured? So they're on the MEC program anyway, Denise, they, they are, um, uh, there's, there's a very great variety in assessment. You know, it's not just essays and exams. Though there are some exams, there are some essays, but there are shorter pieces of continuous assessment as well. And they might take many different forms. I mean, they could be, um, they could be doing things in workshops. They could be um, putting together bibliographies. They could be getting on, on media machine culture. It could be putting together some video content uh, for a module. Um, one of the modules that we have on the program is called the Media and Culture Seminar. And actually in that module, the students themselves decide the curriculum. So at the start of the module, they decide a topic that they want to um, uh, focus on for the duration of the semester. So that could be something like climate change in the media. It could be something like the influence of social media in our lives. Whatever it happens to be, they can decide it. The lecturer puts together the curriculum and throughout that module, they have to, um, uh, they have to, the assessment for that module is basically a learning journal, which they record what they're learning week by week. And then they get to reflect on it at the end of the module. So there's lots of different types of assessments that test various different skills and knowledges that the students have. Um, so I think there's good variety in it. So I'm gonna probably say something about the English and History program. Yeah, just to, to build on what I want to say there, the notion that, you know, students be assessed just by exam and essay now is sort of old fashioned and, you know, we don't, there are all, obviously those types of assessments on our degree, but there's also a really vast range of different forms of assessments. One of the things that we really try to develop with our students is, is going out into the world. So for example, we have a course on the troubles in Northern Ireland. So we bring students up to Belfast and we visit murals and we speak to people um, who have been through that period. Um, and then students are asked to reflect on that. Um, so that's obviously sort of living history, I suppose, or they might visit a famine ship, or we might get them into archives and get them sort of sifting through documents. And in terms of English, it, you know, part of your um, assessment might allow you to talk about, you know, something that you're really interested in, a program or a film or a book that you've read, and you might see it as fitting into some of the themes of the course, or indeed it might, your assessment might involve you actually going to a play in Dublin or indeed in Carlo, um, and, and to sort of reflect on that experience. We also, where we can as well, try to get students to sort of think themselves into certain periods of history and certain periods of literature. So one of our first year courses um, asks students to write reviews of books from the time in which they were first published. And that could be quite good fun because opinions change. So we look at, for example, Edna O'Brien's The Country Girls and the sort of hatred and opprobrium that was met with. And students can adopt that uh, stance if they wish, but it's part of them thinking their ways into the sort of period in which they're uh, studying. So, you know, a vast range of assessments that test different things, as Owen suggests but also that it is relevant to the degree that they're studying. Um, and as I say, this notion of doing English and doing history is one of the things that we try to draw out through our, through our assessments. Um, so for example, just to give you a sort of more extreme example, um, you know, one year we visited a sort of nature reserve in Carlo as part of our Victorian poetry assessments um, to think about ways in which ecology and poetry are connected. So we do try to think outside the box, I suppose, in terms of how we assess students. Great, thanks very much. And Derek, just in terms of like maybe some of the creative writing modules, do they have to, can they choose, um, I don't know, what they want to do, what types of they'd like to write etc yeah sorry Denise I seem to lose connection there could you ask me that question again yeah no you're gone yeah, no, I was just asking just in terms of creative writing, like, do they have to, um, can they choose what kind of poetry they want to write or um, what kind of project they want to work on for their final 
their final project I suppose in class like their final assessment or do you set a specific thing just uh, generally we explore broad props I mean it's up to students then to bring their own distinctive experience as they do um, to to that prompt so there would be a lot of leeway I wouldn't tell them precisely what to do but we would explore general areas that are common human experiences um, you know your relationship with your father your relationship with your mother and uh, maybe a hero that you would imagine yourself meeting and uh, writing about that meeting uh, possibly so there is a certain amount of flexibility although we do try to guide uh, uh, students into particular subject areas to explore you know uh, leave it there. So I will say, as anyone who is interested in studying at Carlo College, I would encourage them to follow us on social media as um, we upload events that are happening in the college, um, updates about our new courses, our existing courses. Um, so, really, just link in with us there. We will have CAO um, box up on Instagram so you can ask questions there as well. And link in with us if you'd like to tour our campus. We are um, facilitating small group tours up to groups of seven to come tour the campus um, so you can get a feel for what it's like. Uh, I'd like to thank all of our academic staff for being here, Dr Owen Smith, Dr Simon Workman and Dr Derek Coyle and to our students who joined us today, Mark Mahoney and Lorda Delaney, thanks very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and yeah we look forward to seeing you in Carlo College in 2022. <laughs> That's brilliant, thank, thank you. Everyone. Bye everybody, thanks. take care. Bye. Bye.